Hello and welcome to Ula Tilly Readings. My name is Lenore and tonight I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Cancer. If Cancer is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. All right, let's get started. And so we have the magician or is it the, it's the magus. <laughs> well, it's like, is it the magician? Yes, it's the magician or the magus, right? Okay, and let's go ahead and take a look and see what these tea leaves have to say. Now, there's not much difference between the two, the magi, the magus, the magician. Although, you know, really, if you look into the traditions, it might be um, that these names are a little bit, it's like a magician and a sorcerer. They're not exactly the same thing, right? So, uh, but the same sentiment, the same sentiment a magical practitioner, an adept, one who knows and can see and is in great, uh, great alignment with the elements. Okay. All right. Let's see what we have going on. What's going on? What's going on? So if you have not subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit that little bell. It'll let you know when the next readings are coming out. It is free to subscribe. All right, I'm just, I'm really looking at the sword over here and I'm thinking it has super sword in the stone energy, right? And if you don't remember uh, the mythology, and this is Arthurian, mythology uh this is this this sword that has been placed in a stone right and all of these people uh knights pages noblemen um you know people of some of elevation obviously all coming around from places here there all over the the countryside um so that they can take a chance to try to pull this sword from the stone and if they do they become the next king right and i think that's the story maybe i don't remember exactly i think there was no error right so they had to um kind of have this weird <laughs> uh ordeal <laughs> so that they could decide who was gonna rule the kingdom does that make sense? I don't know. <laughs> but the point is that the least likely, right, Arthur, this young boy, um, at the time he was young, uh, goes and he pulls it with ease, comes right out where all these other people, they came, they uh, could not do, you know, big, small, strong, normal, whatever. Um, couldn't do it, but then there was Arthur and he went and he pulled it and it was meant to be right. The gods had blessed, uh, this union. And so I look at this and I feel, yeah, there's something in your life here, um, that you have the innate ability to do. You were born for this. Now you might not believe or you know i don't know uh have any uh kind of fondness for the idea of fate or predestination or or anything like this i myself really do kind of i get kind of defensive i'm like hey now <laughs> what about free will um but i do feel like yeah there are certain things that we're born to do uh, we might not know it, and you know what? We might not ever find that thing. It w our life may not um, align in such a way that that aspect of self is activated. But I feel here you are coming into this period of your life, right? And this might be like a big kind of 
rite of passage or um, kind of the season turning going into another act of your of your being and um yeah you're you're getting there you're finding that thing that just absolutely is for you now i have to believe this has something to do with your abilities towards right manifestation magic um you might be a practitioner yourself, uh, a, um, a study, uh, somebody who studies the uh, occult or a magical tradition. Um, you might be a diviner. I know there's a lot of readers that come to watch these readings. Um, shout out to you. <laughs> Drop your, uh, your channels, your infos in the comments. You know I love to support my fellow readers, um, but I do, and it, it, this could be that you are somebody who is quite clairvoyant or a medium, um, you know, astrologist, uh, something, you know, we have that magic vibe, we have that world creator, I do like to think of the magician as the world creator, because that's what it is. This is a person who builds their reality from the bottom to the top. I think I always think of as an example, um, a person like Tolkien, right? This author who created a vast universe, uh, languages, mythologies, uh, you know, the, the personalities, the beloved, uh, archetypes and characters. This is a magician, right? And and a magician can do this within uh, their own creative processes, but also within their own life, right? What we consider to be real life, whatever that means. Um, somebody who, yeah, can really kind of mold their experience with reality, very much in control of their perceptions how they experience things, what it feels like, how do they react. These are world creators. And uh, I absolutely always, in my mind, think of every single, especially solar and lunar cancers as prime magical workers. You just have it in you for some reason. I don't know. I'm jealous. I'd love to have this myself, <laughs> but um, I have never met a cancer person who was not magically inclined, magically inclined. And so um, absolutely this all makes sense to me. Now, let's take a look. Let's see what else we have going on. So I do feel like there is, now we have a person here standing. You can see the head, you can see the body. Now I see that they have one dragon, two little, three little dragons, okay? Um, and I, we're in the year of the dragon, right? 2024 going into 2025, we are in the year of the dragon. Uh, absolutely feel like this is a time where you are deploying uh, your full will on your life. You are, um, all of the things that you have come to learn, uh, your abilities, your skills, your, um, kind of proclivities towards certain things, the niches that you work within, um, getting all of these things together, right? In a creative or it has to do with work possibly, um, maybe this is spiritual work. Maybe this is the career that you've chosen, how you make your money. Um, this might be creative processes, putting out, um, new material and so on. But I feel you taking these things that you have, yeah, from scratch put together and putting it out into the universe, right? For others to experience. So maybe you started a business. Maybe you are taking on clients. 
uh, maybe you have started a new career or you are really kind of reinvesting yourself in that work, right? We all have this. I talk about this a lot with long-term relationships, but this is so true of a lot of things in our lives, including the work that we do for money, right? There are absolutely times where we are very dedicated right in there, paying close attention to everything we're doing, um, continuing our education, widening, widening our skill set, uh, you know, just really kind of evolving our abilities. And then there are times where we're just on autopilot, right? We're just going through the motions. And uh, I think that ebb and flow, that waxing and waning, absolutely normal, natural, um, nothing to lament, but something to be aware of. Now, I think that you're absolutely in this place where you're really kind of reasserting yourself, okay? And so the rest of this year, I can see you kind of taking these beautiful gems that you have cultivated within self and your abilities and yeah, putting them into action, letting them work for you, uh, revealing how much you've evolved, right? And so I feel that this is a time of great power. I mean, absolutely, there seems to be quite a sense of confidence, which I love to see in a cancer. You can't stop a confident cancer when they know what they're doing, when they think they know what they're doing. <laughs> they, you know, um, you all get it. I mean, you just get it together. Uh, making lots of moves in favor of your personal growth of kind of the, um, well, building a very dynamic life, right? Not only on the outside, but on the inside. And uh, just trusting in yourself, okay? That's a big thing. I don't think that you have a lot of problem with confidence usually, but it is really this, this trusting yourself enough to let, let these things out right? You can, you can build this stuff all day long, kind of, uh, away from eyes to see. I imagine like in your, your little laboratory, your studio, your, you know, office in your home somewhere, working away late into the night, you know, studying and, and, um, being just transported into other worlds through your interests and your passions and your devotion. Uh, but taking all of this and then, and then showing it to anybody else, showing it to the world, um, not always an easy step for you, but I feel that there's a lot of confidence here and this is going to be your year, right? This next part of the year, at least, right? Everything kind of rising, rising, rising. Um, and so I do also see, uh, we have an audience down here. Okay. We have people sitting. This one even looks like it might be clapping a little bit. Okay. So I do, I, I feel like whatever it is that you're doing, there, it will be received well. Now that might not matter to you. And that's, that's awesome. <laughs> I, there's nothing better than an artist, a musician, um, you know, a writer or whatever you create that just does not care what people think about it. I mean, absolutely. Um, but I do think that it will be received well. And I think that will make you feel good. Yeah, it will. It will. You might not show it. You might not even admit it to me or anybody else. But it will. It'll make you feel good. All right. Let's see. We have... We 
We have 21 up here. So oops, the number 21. And then we have an eight. It might be 218, but I think it's 21 and then an eight. We kind of have the, this one actually looks very much like the uh, magician card. We have um, Hermes, and that's who is on the, the Magus card or the magician card. Um, we have Hermes standing here, um, kind of lifted up. You can see the, the wings on the head. Now this isn't pictured with the wings, but we do have the egg with wings. Um, but you can see kind of similar postures there. Um, mirroring each other actually it's interesting that this happens in the tea leaves it but it absolutely does it's not just like a one-off this happens quite often now Hermes being held by and it looks like a witch like a just a classic witch um, kind of stereotypical character uh, or character uh, the hat up here the head you can see the hair kind of flying almost sitting holding Hermes, okay, holding the magic. Um, and there is a sense of, when the hand is raised like this, um, I often see in it as a uh, kind of sense of devotion, of awe. If you could imagine, right, you're out you know, wherever, I don't know, you're out in a field, right? You're picking flowers, you're um, getting some sun, you're, uh, you know, I don't know, farming or, or taking a walk or whatever, whatever gets you out there in a clearing, right? And you're out there and it's a warm, sunny day and it's beautiful, it's not too hot, it's not too cold, everything's perfect, not a, not a bug in sight, well, bugs around, right? And we can hear them, but they're not biting you. So that's wonderful. There's a blessing right there. And suddenly, yeah, maybe a cloud starts to go by and you think, wow, that cloud is moving really quickly. And um, then you go back to what you're doing and the next thing you know, the sky is um, you know, opening up and all of a sudden there are, uh, you know, I don't know, a bunch of gods or goddesses or a god or a goddess, or maybe it's, you know, uh, an image of, of the Buddha or, um, one of the Buddhas or, you know, whoever it is, right? Whatever you might encounter, but it is, it is a thing of awe and you are witnessing this beautiful, um, horrifying because it's, you know, it's coming out of the sky. That's kind of scary, but you lift your hand, right? And it is a moment you feel like crying. You can feel, you know, that your throat, the lump in your throat, it is something so beyond your, um, perception or yeah, perception. Um, this is something that is out of the world, out of this world. It is absolutely, um, you know, you can't even fathom that this is happening, but yet it is. And there is a great sense of love and, and, um, you know, this visitation is a miraculous, occurrence and of course you are in awe you are mesmerized you lift your hand because it doesn't maybe it doesn't seem real maybe this is a an offering of um of connection of love i would reach out and touch you um you know my beloved uh divinity right and so i look at this and i'm thinking it's just it is. It's flowing through you. You are in touch with that current. It is. It's like a river, right? Of energy that flows through your life. This is where you derive that magic. And it is one of passion, desire, interest, motivation, right? It is the moving thing. It is the thing that gets even the, what is it? The immovable mover, right? The ineffable. This is that current that gets that thing moving. This is the fire, the electricity of the universe that 
current of creation and it is flowing through your life and you are harnessing it. I can see you are a practitioner. You are a magic maker. You are a manifester. And you're not going to squander what they call the, it's the quicksilver, right? Can you think of what that looks like? That metallic silver? That is Hermes. Fluid. Moving, ever-changing. And so it is. You are adaptable. You are profoundly talented. And now you also have that current of energy, the creative source, really, really active in your life. There's motivation and focus there. So you are unstoppable. You're going to make the most of this next six months, I can tell. There's going to be a movement towards, yeah, money probably. But also that, you know, um, that is a byproduct of something greater. And I think that really, for a lot of us, the money thing is a source of stress. It's the thing that dampens a lot of our creative, you know, inspiration and output and so on. I don't think that you will be lacking there. And in fact, they think that it feeds. It's a loop. It feeds into having the resources, not having the, as much stress, feeling more confident, feeling alive and fiery. And so having the motivation and getting the things done continuing on with the work. It all comes together. It all feeds into itself. Okay, let's take a look over here. Now, we have it looks like a Z in an I. Z-I, whatever that means to you. And also, I guess it could be N-I, but I like Z-I for some reason. Um, but it could be N-I as well. Maybe these are initials or part of a name or a word or something meaningful to you. Uh, we also have the number 108. 108. Um, we also have... I know. Somebody told me, put it... You read the thing sometimes where I can't see. It's hard for me to remember always. Sometimes I'm looking. <laughs> um, I know. I always want to show you what I'm looking at, but... You know, I get lost in the bowl as well. Um, so we do have a person calling for, I don't know, let's see. We have an arm up and raised. It is a praise again, this kind of um, posture of praise. But now we have a mermaid, right? A siren. Um, and usually we have two meanings for the siren. And that is one that is... Uh, one that calls you to your destruction, right? The other is uh, a creature, a being, a, a um, evolved consciousness that traverses that vast abyss, right? That ocean of collective unconscious, the abstracts, the symbols, um, the concepts, the, the words, the utterances, whatever. These fragments of information kind of just swirling around in this ocean. You can imagine uh, this creature, this beautiful being swimming through and, and grabbing on, collecting. It's almost kind of like Ariel, right? Where she goes and she collects all of her little doodads and her little um, tchotch tchotchkes and things. Um, it's similar to that, right? But these are uh, the fragments of concepts of, of, you know, whatever. Whatever is coming to your mind. Um, these little pieces, these jewels from the universe that come through in dreams and visions and um, kind of uh, creative emanations and so on. Uh, so I do feel like through your grace, your faith, your devotion to your spiritual path, 
it gets clearer and clearer. You're having more and more inspiration. So stay in that routine, whatever that looks like for you. If you are keeping altars, giving offerings, if you are praying, going to church, going to mass, going to temple, going to mosque, whatever it is, right? Meditating, doing your postures, um, ha you know, whatever, whatever it looks like for you. Stay in that routine, devote yourself to that routine because this is where your inspiration is being derived. Absolutely. Okay, now we're going to do our divine door cards over here. Okay, and I'm just going to flip through and I'm going to stop where it feels right. Oh, yes, I never get this one and I love it. I forget what the actual card says, but I love this doorway. I love the steps. I love everything about it. It says birth. All right, another gateway appears in view. New life is unfolding with blessings to you. Yes, new life is unfolding with blessings to you. And I do. I feel like you're going into a new, at least a new uh, scene, right, of your life. It might be a new act, though. I feel like it. This is there's a profound birthday coming up, right? One of the big ones, maybe. Or a life event, right? These are these rites of passage, like um, having a child, getting married, finding the love of your life or one of your beloveds. Um, you know, I don't know, having a grandchild, retiring, whatever it is, right? This, I think there's something, a portal coming up here for you. And um, you're going to make the dangled mess, best. <laughs> I was going to say dang old best of it. It's not mess of it. No, best of it. The dang old best of it. <laughs> all right. Cancer, I'm going to go ahead and tell you I love you because I do. And you know that. I hope you do. And um, it's always such an honor to be able to bring these messages to you. If you would be so kind as to like the video, it really does help the channel. Um, yeah, I don't know what's up with my, uh, recommends and stuff. I've heard from multiple people. They don't see me in their recommendations anymore. Uh, yeah, my views have been, you know, going down. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think it's just kind of these things happen with the algorithm. I don't, it's hard to say why. Um, but any, any kind of engagement really does help the channel a lot. So liking it, leaving a comment, even if it's just like a little heart or whatever. Um, I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. I really do. And beyond that, I just love reading your comments, hearing about you, knowing who is watching. Um, there are quite a few people that I have gotten to know over the last year and a half or however long I've been doing this. Um, and it's like my favorite thing about the channel is just like getting to know who is coming here. So if you, uh, want to leave a comment, please do. Yeah. Um, also if you haven't subscribed yet, think about doing that. You can hit that little bell. It'll let you know when the next readings are coming out. And of course it is free to subscribe. Uh, there is a membership thing on here. Um, it's kind of like a support tier. I don't, I always forget. It's like $1.99 or $2.99. Um, also gives you access to the dis discord, um, which is like a chat room. Okay. So anyways, cancer, I love you. Take care of yourself. We're going to talk in a few days. Uh, yeah, that's it. All right. Good night.